condition, use the if then in order to check for one condition, otherwise you do something else. Or you could go with more by using if then else, that you check for two different conditions and you do something else based on that. Or you could just keep going. But the problem with if then else if is that the sequence is important. That means you have to really think about the structure of your condition because if you change the sequence on them, you totally lose the logic, perhaps. Like in the case of grading techniques, let's say you are an instructor, you want to grade your kids and you want to basically see, okay, if X is less than like 80, it might be B, if it's greater than 60, it might be something else. But if somebody gets like 85 and you have placed that logic at the top, if you are greater than 80 or 70, you always get A. But if you don't follow the sequence, you might not get the correct grading scheme. So, you know, instead of having like that problem, you can actually go with a different technique here, like case statement. So the, the order in which you are checking the condition might not really be that important. Uh, you, or you don't have to be worried about it. You're only checking for the value. So that gives you more flexibility using the select case statement. That's why I actually showed it to you, part of the code design. Now, in this scenario, uh, you have another practice that you can go and evaluate the structure. But as a last note, we talked about sub-processes and we talked about the re reusability. We never demonstrated that. Let's go back in here on the editor. As you see, I have my sub-procedure and basically within the second procedure, you could actually have this function. So why don't I go ahead and say case, for example, one, if I click OK, and instead of showing the message box OK, after that, I also like to call this procedure in here, and instead of repeating the same routine, I basically go and call that particular procedure. And right now, by placing my cursor within the sub-procedure 1, if I click OK, it says your value is 2. If I click Cancel, it says you have answered Cancel, that's fine, it exists. But if I run it again, and if I click OK, it says you have answered OK, and it will call the second procedure, and now I can put, like for example, 20, and it says you are an adult. So as you see, from one procedure, I'm calling another procedure. So that shows the true procedure invocation, and of course, the true object-oriented design that you can go ahead and reuse your, uh, you know, basically code elsewhere. There's another animation that shows how to pass an argument from one procedure to the other. In this scenario, they are actually declaring a variable as an argument in there. And basically, using that argument, they can show you that you can use that within the procedure. In my demonstration, I did not show any argument at all. Let's go ahead and create a new sub-procedure in here and show you how to declare that. I like to declare a new sub-procedure and I say, say hi. And I use a variable within the parentheses declaration of the sub-procedure. I call it, for example, a string name as a string. And basically, within here, I just show a message box and I say hello. And I concatenate that with the string name. So basically what I do, I get the value of whatever I'm passing to this procedure and I concatenate it with hello. Now here, if I'm an adult also, I also like to say, for example, go ahead and say hi, and I have to pass a string value into it. But instead of basically, is placing a value into a variable from an input box. I'm just calling an input box right within this particular parameter, making it a little bit more complicated for you, but I just wanted to demonstrate that you can actually use the function as a variable or as a expression. Check this out. If I put input box, say, uh, what's your name? And that's it. Basically, the value coming out of the input box will be passed as the string name. And I can greet to it. Let's go and check this out. I'm clicking within the first module. In order to demonstrate this even better, what I like to do, I like to place a breakpoint in here and show you the program execution. 
So if I run this now, it says my value is two. Okay, if I click okay, it says you have, you have answered okay. Now you see it stops right down in here. Now before I execute that line, I have put a stop to it, like a stop sign on the streets. Now I can actually use the debug menu and say step into. It will step into the second procedure as you see. I can actually also right click and choose the debug menu, debug toolbar, and basically step into right from in here, which we're going to talk about again in chapter five. The more I talk about debugging is better for you. So if I step into it, it will run one line at a time. How old are you? I go for example 33. And then of course I go down. Is this 18? What is this number? You can point at it as you see the debugger tells you what the value is. If I move on a little bit, it's not, 18, it's not less than 18, it's greater than 18. So it goes and says you are an adult, and then it calls the say hi. But however, it will call the parentheses first. In other words, if I say step into, it will ask my name. So I put my name information, click OK, and now, as you see, the string name has become my name. So it called the third module. No, I'm sorry, the third procedure. If I go next, it says hello, so hello, and it goes back, it comes back to the calling procedure, it comes back to the calling procedure, and so forth. So I'm done now. So if I launch this again once more, if I click run again, click OK, you have answered OK, I step into it, it goes to the second procedure, I put my age again, it goes down, it shows I'm an adult, it asks me a question, what is my name? And then finally, it will jump to the third function. I want you to pay attention to this particular icon. It says call stack. It shows all available procedures that have loaded into the memory. And it shows the lifetime. The one at the top is the last one that I've called. The one at the bottom is the first one that has been executed. So as you see right now, I'm in here. As a matter of fact, I can click on the second procedure and say show. As you see, the green arrow says that you are looking at that procedure, but the yellow line says that you are executing that line. So you can move back and forth. And of course, I wanted to show you this because that's the center of attention in chapter five, debugging. So I demonstrated for you how to pass a variable from one procedure to the other. So please pay attention to this specific animation.